Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Boyon and to another episode on my flood damaged Porsche 968. In the previous episode we got the engine to run which means the work on the motor was as good as done but I have done a couple of things off camera as you can see I've installed the airbox, I've installed the trim on the front of the engine bay and most importantly I have also installed the belts and I've tensioned them um for those of you that don't follow me on instagram i managed to find a bearing for the aircon pulley and i've got the box on the bench over here this is the part that you want to order for tbgs 11 g 2ds from nachi this is exactly the same bearing as i took out um, this was i think 56 euro so that's a lot cheaper than buying a reconditioned pump, which is about 450, or buying a new clutch pack, which is 900. So that's all done. It's all working. It's not squealing. It's perfectly good. So you're wondering why you're looking at the engine. Well, just because I wanted to show you how beautiful this was. But what we are doing in this episode is we are removing the suspension. So that side is still intact. This side is off. And if you have a look here, you'll see I've got my wheels in the back there and I've got all kinds of junk on the floor. But this is roughly what it looks like inside of the wheel well. It's not all too bad. There's no real rust. It's just very dirty. And these discs are completely worn out. Um, and let me show you what it looks like after you've spent a day or two cleaning it. Then you get to something that looks like this. It's by no means perfect but it's a lot, a lot, a lot better. I've managed to clean off all the oil that is, was in here as well. It was very oily. Um, the calipers are going to be sent off to be refurbished. Um, I want them to be perfect. Uh, but for the rest, it's quite good. Um, I've also cleaned up the A-arm. This is still the original one, by the way, and it's in really good nick. So this is going back into the car. And on the bench over here, I have the suspension strut and these guys have failed as you can see uh, not unexpected the car is 30 plus years old so uh, these things tend to happen so in this episode we are going to rebuild these struts and i have decided to do coney yellow which is under my bench here so there's a bit of a modification we have to do which i'll take you through and for the rest, we are just going to clean everything. I've also got the back off. This is not too bad. Uh, it just needs some cleaning and new discs as well. And also these calipers are going off to be refurbished. So um, hopefully by the end of this video, which is going to be about three or four weeks in the making, um, I'll have a completely rebuilt suspension. And after this one, we'll start doing the cosmetic work again. So sit back, relax, and let's start working. Alright, so this is what it looks like after the fender liner has been removed. It's not too bad, it's just a little bit dirty, so we'll clean that up. The next thing to do is get the disc off, get the caliper off, and get this whole strut assembly out. So once that is out, we can start cleaning. Thank you. 
right, so everything is now sort of out of the car. The last thing to come out is the strut, which we'll do now. But you can see the insane mess that I've got on my floor. Um, this is the joy of working on this car. But the last thing we have to do, as I've already popped off the beauty caps, is just undo these four 13 millimeter bolts and the strut will drop down and we can start um, cleaning things up again. So after a couple of hours of cleaning, we end up with something that looks like this. The arch linings are clean as well, and this is now looking presentable. So what I want to do now is just quickly go to the back, get the brake calipers off because they need to be sent off for refurbishing. I want to install a brake line here quickly, then that is all sealed up and cleaned again. Um, and then we can start rebuilding the shocks. many many minutes later all right so that was a bit of a battle and i think it's fair to say i lost this little bolt is not going anywhere so they'll have to extract it for me there's nothing i can do about it hopefully i can still find a hard line um, otherwise i'll just have to make one myself but uh hopefully porsche sells them and then i don't have to go bend stuff um i'll just cut it off here and then this will go off to the people to refurbish That handbrake is completely full of mud, but we knew that. All right, let's quickly do the other side. Alright, so I'm satisfied with what I've achieved. Um, the car is fairly clean. Um, you can see all of the mud and gunk is away here. Um, now this will just get dirty again, but at least it's a good start for when I put this car back on the road. Um, suspension arms are clean. There's no more mud anywhere. It's all been cleaned out. So I'm happy with this. The same goes for the other side. This is also now cleaned up as you can see. It's looking really good. I'm quickly going to clean this garage because it really is disgusting. It does not translate on, on camera at all. Um, it is a disaster zone in here, so I'm going to get that cleaned up. Once I've done that, we will come and we will start taking out this shock absorber. The next day. All right, so this is the strut uh, in its component form on my bench. This is the shock absorber part that you see here. Um, that's the bit we're going to modify. Um, then you have the top hat or top bearing but it's a little bit gritty so i'm replacing this with a new one and this was quite expensive but i'd rather have this be good than have an issue with the steering um, this is of the cap that sits on top of the spring and this is the hub itself and then this is the coney that we are going to be putting into the strut 
and then lastly i'm going to put on a new bump stop and a new dust cover so um, i've got the instructions for the coney here basically what i need to do i need to drill a hole in the bottom and i need to chop this off i'm not going to give you guys all the details of how to do this i'm going to link a really good video from coney uh, down in the description so you get the exact details but I'll give you the things that are special for 968. So the first thing I'm going to do is drill the hole in the bottom. And then we'll start measuring this piece. Because I think that's the bit that's important for you if you're doing your 968. Alright, so let's measure from here to here. That is 55 millimeters. And if we look on the instructions, it says if it's a 56, which this is then, I need to measure 50 millimeters on the shock itself. So just before I do the last piece of the cutting, I wanted to show you for the 968, you need five centimeters from the top of the strut to the cut line. And that's exactly what I've got. So I've just got to cut the last little section and then we can take this old shock absorber apart. Right, and that's what we end up with. There we go. Right, so for the 968, remember five centimeters from the top and then your insert will fit. That is the only thing that they do not specify in this video from Kony, which I've linked down below. Go and look at that. You'll know how to do this. It's really straightforward. It feels scary, but it isn't. So now I just have to neaten up these cut lines and make this hole bigger and then protect the metal. And then we are ready to rebuild these shocks. The next day. Right, so now that I've cleaned the cut and I've put some epoxy primer on here and rust neutralizer, etc., etc., this is nicely protected. The same goes for the bottom of the strut. I can now insert the coney into the strut. Just tie it up into the bench. And then we just drop the strut into the housing, like that. And now all we have to do is just bring this bolt into the bottom. I put some Loctite on there and I just need to torque it up to 75 Newton meters and then we are done. All right, that's 75. Alrighty, so that's the strut now rebuilt with a new Kony insert. Last thing for me to do is to put the protection around this cut that we made and that is by slimply sliding over in this little rubber that should do the trick we can now bring on the spring again let's do that We have to make sure that the spring sits in the right spot. That looks good to me. Next thing is a new bump stop and a dust cover. We just have to thread through here quick. Then we bring on this top cover and again make sure that the groove sits in the right spot where we need it to be. Something like that. So just to explain why I'm replacing this top hat, listen to this. And this is the new one. Big difference. All right, so the last thing we have to do is put a spring washer in and put the new nut on top. And then we can tighten it down. Then we bring an 11 millimeter socket, which will hold the strut in its position. Drop this guy over and bring in this guy like that. And then this guy. And now we can continue tightening it down. 
I'm supposed to torque this down, but I don't have a torque wrench that can do this, and I do not have a crow's feet that's big enough. So this is the way we're going to do it. Good and tight. That should do. And we can easily check that because there should be a little bit of a wobble. And that's exactly what I've got. So this is good enough. All right, so that's one strut done. I still have this one to do, and then we can get them back into the car. The next morning. With the front struts complete, it's time to put them back where they belong. And this one is a right front strut. And as you can see, I've already put back the fender lining. It's been protected by a special coating uh, from Autoglim. And I also have a new brake line and I have the A-arm cleaned up and ready to go. Everything is clean. So the next thing for me to do is to just bring this guy into its spot and then we can make sure the whole front here is reassembled. Getting new washers and new bolts. reassembled on the front strut as you can see i've got the um cooling for the brakes in i've also got it on on the a arm down here i've cleaned the hub itself and i've got the brake line and i've got the abs or speed sensor uh, connected to its block over here as well so the only thing i have left to do is put to put on a new brake disc and then we are done on this side for now That's the front hub assembled as far as I can do it for now. Now I just need to go and do the other side. Now with the front axle done, we move our attention to the rear axle. Um, I need to replace all of the handbrake hardware that sits in here. We need to put on a new brake disc. Um, I also need to replace the soft lines and the hard lines for the brake calipers. Um, and then I need to replace the shock absorber for the new Kony unit. Many, many minutes later. shock out i'm just going to check whether it's dead or not i suspect it might be yeah there's not a lot of pressure in here it's not too bad it's better than the fronts but um yeah there's nothing it doesn't even come back so uh, good thing we are replacing these guys i've got the uh, new one on the floor there so let's quickly get that in After a bit of struggle, we end up with something that looks like this. And also on the other side, 
I have a disc and I have a Goni shock absorber. So guys, I'm going to call this a night and I'm also going to call this the end to the video. The reason for that is I'm still waiting on my calipers and I'm still waiting on my wheels to arrive. It's going to take another week or so. So for now, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave me a like, comment or subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.